Hello, my name is Daniel Delaney, and my project is on using omniwheels to produce holonomic movement. So first, what are omniwheels? Omniwheels are just like normal wheels that can be driven forward and backward, but with the addition of unpowered rollers around the rim, those unpowered rollers allow them to slide sideways with very little friction. One thing that omniwheels are commonly used for is holonomic movement. Holonomic movement is just movement in all directions. So if you look at the standard vehicle on the left uh, versus the holonomic vehicle on the right, they can both move forwards and backwards, and they can both rotate, but uh, only the holonomic vehicle can move side to side. The standard vehicle can't have controlled side to side m movement. So holonomic motion is movement in any direction. So what happens is, if we want to move in this direction, two of the motors that are pointed in that direction will move, and the other two will not. They'll just stay still. So if we put some numbers to this, if each of the motors has a power of m, a speed of m, sorry, then the total speed will be 2m. But let's take a more complicated example. So suppose that we want to move directly sideways. Uh, now all four motors have to move. And what happens is the horizontal components of their movement are that final vector sideways, but the vertical components all cancel each other out. So there's a set of equations that are pretty well documented that you can use to figure out how quickly each wheel should move. So if we put some number to this, uh, each wheel has a horizontal component of m root 2 over 2. That root 2 over 2 is just there because the wheel isn't pointed in the right direction, so you have to figure that out. Since there's four motors, the total speed is going to be 4m root 2 over 2, or about 2.82m, uh, substantially faster than last time. So we can actually graph these velocities by calculating many different points and plotting them on a chart. Uh, here you can see that going forwards, backwards, left and right are this uh, vehicle's best points of movement and that its worst points of movement are at 45 degree angles, which everything else falling somewhere in between. So for my experiment, I actually built this vehicle and several others, and I tested them, seeing how quickly they can move in different directions. Uh, so I got some mixed results. Uh, for the first one, the data is okay, it's not great. Uh, there's, It's definitely trending in the right direction, and it's uh, had low variability, which I expected. It's not quite as good as the predicted data. Also, there were a couple of data points that I wasn't able to take because of some equipment failure. Then, on types B and C were some other types of vehicle that I looked at. These are different because now the wheels are no longer at 45 degree angles. Instead, these wheels are at 60 degree angles and 120 degree angles to each other. That means the predicted chart looks very different. It now looks very stretched in one direction because it's much faster going in the direction those wheels are aligned and much slower going against the wheel alignment. So for type B, the results that I got are actually pretty close. Uh, the peaks in the right places and um, there's only a couple of things that look a little off. Uh, so that was actually my best result by far. Type C is not quite as good. Uh, it's about the right speed in the uh, going directly up and down, but in the left-right direction, it's not as fast as I'd hoped. Finally, type D was definitely the one that went the worst. Uh, I, this one's just a triangle, and I expected it to be both the smallest and the one with the s lowest variability, but it ended up uh, going the fastest and having the most variability. So in conclusion, because of this uh, bad data, I couldn't reject my null hypothesis, which was that the variations in movement were due to chance and chance alone. It's not necessarily a bad model for predicting movement speeds, but I wasn't uh, able to get enough data to support it, and so more research is still required. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please send them to dulaney.daniel at gmail.com. Thank you very much.